and welcome to the This Nanny Knits Knitting Podcast. My name is Lucy and today I have a little bit of a bonus episode. As I previously spoke about in my last podcast episode, I attended the Southern Wool Show here last Saturday with my mum and said that I would do a little bit of a vlog style haul of our day and what we bought. So that is what I'm here to do. If you haven't been here before, welcome. And if you have, thank you very much for coming back. All of the places you can find me will be down below, but I'll also pop them here. You can find me on Instagram as This Nanny Knits and Ravelry as This Nanny Knits. Obviously, you have found me here on YouTube. I have a few things to go through today. Um, unfortunately, I don't have mum's things here. I don't think she trusted me to look after them. <laughs> okay, so just decided to keep them or knit them up. But um, to be honest, I didn't really think about showing off her things but we can talk about that in a little bit um i have a little bit of footage from the day but not very much because to be honest i was just in the moment and did totally forget so i will pop it in but i don't know if i'll do it at the beginning or at the end or wherever so look out for that um also, I feel really awkward about recording in public places, so I wanted your opinion. How do people feel about other people recording in public? So for me, I'm a bit wary because I'm obviously just recording and although I'm not intentionally recording other people, when you are in a busy place, you're inevitably, inevitably, I can't even speak, um, going to catch other people in your footage so yeah I'm really cautious of that and that they may not want to be recorded but obviously somewhere like that you can't ask everybody if they mind you recording because it would take you all day um, or do people just think look it's a public place if you get snapped in footage you get snapped in footage I don't know maybe I'm overthinking it um, so I was also a little bit cautious of recording for that reason if you have done, if you're a podcaster or you've done vlog style kind of recording before and have felt a similar way or not, then please do share with me down below because maybe it's just something I need to get over and stop thinking about. Um, yeah, maybe I just need to get over that hurdle and not worry about what other people are thinking. But anyway, that was a mini tangent. Um, let's get into the purchases. So in my mind, oh, I'm just going to take the price off of this. In my mind, my intentions, what was I intending? I was intending to get, um, three mini skeins for Imagined Landscapes. I think that's the name. I'll put it here. Um, gnome knit along which I should have looked up because now I can't remember any of the details but basically it's a knit along and it's kind of a mystery in a way you get given clues at um, certain points and it's a gnome you're going to end up with a gnome and I can't even remember there's me looking for my phone I'm recording on it I can't even remember the name of the gnome I'm pretty sure that is it Norwin Norwin the gnome I don't know I'll put it here um, links will be down below for you if you want to check it out but I went with the intention to get three mini skeins for that although I have mini skeins I wanted to get something different and I was on the lookout for shawlography mcal kits or yarn that I could put together myself to form the kit I did not need to buy anything else did I buy other things? Yes. <laughs> Did I need them? Definitely not. But I'm going to share them all with you anyway. So I'm hoping that this won't be very long. I don't want to keep you all day. But I will show you what I got. I don't even remember in what order I got stuff. So we're just going to go straight in. I do know that I bought this first. This is a cone of yarn, as you can see. <laughs> um, basically, my friend Natalie of Blush Yarns 
she has a podcast so go check her out i will link her down below basically she had bought a cone of yarn similar to this she had found it at a christmas tree farm near her she's over in canada so that's not helpful for you if you want to go to a christmas tree farm and find yarn they may have it at yours but um she's over in canada and she found a cone of yarn like this randomly from one of the alpacas i think she said on the farm and she didn't buy it the first time she was there but then she couldn't stop thinking about it and and found a pattern I think that she wanted to knit for it so went back in the hope that it was there and it was. So I didn't really even know that these existed to be honest I've not ever seen one anywhere that I've ever been and I don't know if because I've seen Natalie's maybe subconsciously I was on the lookout for it or I just paid more attention and found it and I love it it was the first thing I bought um so it has a label on it but it's very vague it says pure wool swaldale i don't know what that means it's 1100 grams and it was an absolute steal it was 15 pounds and i think that's an absolute bargain it's very rustic it's quite rough and it has like hay and everything in it and actually it does smell very sheepy. It smells very farmyardy. I'm a, I'm aware that's not a word. <laughs> uh, it, feels, it smells very much like a farmyard. It has all sorts of bits in it, which I shouldn't be picking out, but I couldn't resist. And for 15 pounds, I just thought, you know what? If I don't knit with it, I don't knit with it. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do with it. I would really like to make a sweater. Um, I want to make some sort of sweater out of it. And obviously I've got more than enough. But I don't know what. I would quite like to make something basic that could be quite a good staple in my wardrobe. Obviously it's going to be a very neutral in colour. Um, something a bit like, um, 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 what's it called? The Autumn League Pullover. My friend Karen is knitting for the pigskin party. I really want to make that but I'm not sure if this yarn will work. So basically I had no idea what weight of yarn this was um you can't really tell it's pretty difficult i thought maybe it was a dk i have gone ahead and done the wraps per inch and i got 12 wraps per inch which information online tells me that that means this is a sport weight yarn and the autumn league pullover is a dk weight yarn so what would I need to hold with this to get DK basically? Um, I did try and look online, but I didn't really come up with any good answers. Could I hold a lace, kind of like a mohair with this? Would that work? Or it did say two strands of sport would make a worsted, but obviously I don't really want a worsted. I want a DK. Anyway, if you have any thoughts as to what you think this should be or what I could hold with it to make a DK. I mean, I did only look briefly online. I do need to do a more thorough search because I think it's just calling out to be a sweater. They've got so much of it. I'd love something in this real neutral kind of cream color. What is that? All right, don't worry, it's not. I thought it was a bug. That was like, and you're not even gonna be able to see it. No, you can't even see it. There was something on there and it's not, it's hay, but it looked like it had tiny little legs and that kind of freaked me out a bit. Anyway, this. Don't remember the stall that I got it from. It was a really cool stall actually. It was, um, let me put that down. It was a bit of a vintage stall. Um, it had loads of oldie woldy bits on it, knitting needles and swifts and ball winders. And yeah, they were all really, really vintage and old and to be honest, there was a lot of stuff on the stool that I had no idea if it was even anything to do with knitting. It must have been for some sort of craft, but had no idea what half of it was. Um, but yeah, she had quite a few of these cones. So I had to get one of those and that was the first thing I bought because I didn't want it to be sold out when I went back. So it did mean I had to carry it around for a little while. <laughs> um, what did I get next? let's go for this so i visited another stall called rosie's moments here's the lady's card i had not heard of this company before 
um, but she had some really, really lovely things on her stall. And I found some mini skeins. A green one, and it's got sparkly glitter in. I think you know where this is going. A red one <laughs> with sparkly silver stellina. And a cream one, because I think for the gnome you needed something neutral and then two colours. Now, when I was there, I thought, oh, this will be amazing. It's going to be something really Christmassy. It'll look so cool. And now I'm a bit like, mm, I don't know if I should have gone for the traditional colours or not. However, I'll use some of them, if not all of them, and then something that I've got in stash. But I just thought they were really cute. I quite liked them. I liked that they had a little bit of glitter in, because if you can't have glitter at Christmas, when can you? Um, yeah, these are a 75, 25, there's 85 meters on each one, and they were from Rosie's Moments. So I got those. I also found something really cool at Rosie's Moments that I had never, ever seen before. I'm, it came in an organza bag. They had lots of different colors. I'm gonna get it out for you so I can show you. Oh, am I? Yep, it was tangled. I didn't think I was able to get it out then. Now, this is really fun. Mum got one of these too, but in a different colour. She's already unwound hers. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this, to be honest. I think I might keep it as a prize because it's super cool. Um, so basically, it's a gift in a ball. So this is 100 grams of fingering weight yarn. It is a 75-25 and it's 400 metres and it's kind of multicoloured, rainbowy. Hmm, that's not very good, let's just wind that background. Uh, rainbow colours. But the cool thing about this is it has gifts inside. So mum unwound hers while she was here actually just because she was too impatient. So she literally sat here and wound it from one ball to another and picked out all the gifts inside. So there was all sorts of things and so much in it. In fact, I can feel something there um, poking out. So there are stitch markers and um, progress keepers. I think she had some pins, she had blocking pins, she had safety pins. There was a whole bunch of random gifts inside her ball. So I think I'm gonna keep this one don't hold me to it, but I think I'm going to keep this one as a prize for the podcast for one of our cows coming up, or maybe one that's already going. I'm not sure. I haven't quite decided. That was from Rosie's Moments as well. So that's what I got from her. Um, what else did I get? Ah, oh, yes. So I also went to Pickle Lily making cute things. So I actually saw this company and bought something from this company, must be two years ago. I think it was the autumn before the pandemic started and I went with my mother-in-law. Um, and I bought a really nice sheep pattern bag, like a pro project bag, and a little notions pouch too, which I both, I use still both of, oh my goodness, Lucy. I still use both of them now and she had all sorts of lovely things on her um, stall so I got this really cool llama bag alpaca bag llama bag I can't remember one of them has bigger ears don't they these ones have got quite long ears I can't remember which way round it was anyway this really cute bag that I thought would be great for socks and actually the thing I loved about it the most was one of the handles unpops and you can hook it around something. So the, I think it was the lady's husband was saying, she takes these ones when she goes on holiday because when you're on the, well, when we can go on, on holiday, when you go on the aeroplane, you can literally unhook this and hook it round um, the seat in front of you, you know, like on the little hook or on the dinner tray or whatever. And it can just hang there and you can knit from it. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and I just loved the print, to be honest. They had so many lovely ones, but, I went for this one this time and they're such good quality because I still love the one that I bought a couple of years ago and you can just chuck them in the wash and they wash up beautifully so I got one of those and I also bought a different style bag so it's a roll top bag um not a bro maybe it is a roll top but a roll bag I'll show you um but they kind of sold this one to me because the lady was knitting 
um, something of her own and she had it in one of these bags and it was literally like a Mary Poppins bag. She was like, let me show you how much I can get in there. And she literally was just pulling out this project and it, it went on forever and ever and ever. And it doesn't appear, like it's not a massive, massive bag, but it does open up. It's kind of like a bucket, a bucket base kind of bag, kind of. Um, and you see, so you can put your project inside. It's just a orangey kind of fabric on the inside. It's got two poppers at the top. And then you can literally roll it down to wherever, like here. And then it's got ruler attachment so you can like tie it up too if you wanted to. And then you can squish it in your bag. So her daughter was there with her selling things. And um, she said she literally can just stuff so much in her handbag because she can put a project in her bag like this, roll it down, tie it up, and then it squishes into her bag more easily. So I'm a sucker for a project bag, so why not? And I just love the pattern. It's yarn and knitted fabric and all sorts on there. So I went for one of those as well. That's what I got from Pickle Lily. I didn't need bags, but you can never have too many, can you? Um, what else, what else, what else? What should we go for next? Let's go to this store. So, Mum saw a, another project bag that she liked at this store. This store was, it was a combination of two stores. Oh, let me get the, one second. Let me get the other lady's card. So it was a combination. The bag that she got was Sewing B by D. This was the lady that made it. Handmade crafting bags and accessories. And then there was another lady with her. I'm guessing they're friends or, I think they were friends. I don't think they are of the correct age to be mother and daughter. But um, another lady with her called Bean crafts a lot. So mum saw a project bag that she really liked, that she wanted, and they were doing an offer for a project bag, a skein of yarn, and a progress keeper for X amount of money. I can't even remember how much. And mum didn't want the progress keeper or the yarn because she just didn't need it. She'd already bought stuff. Um, sorry guys, I'm having issues with this eye today. So naturally, not wanting to, you know, not take hold of a great bargain, <laughs> naturally that meant I had to buy the yarn and the progress keeper. So there were so many really cute progress keepers and I think I picked up a little bumblebee at first, but then I saw they had Christmas ones it had to be done. I first had the Santa in my hand, but then I saw this Christmas tree. And it is super duper cute. It's like, oh, let me take it out of the plastic because you might be able to see it a bit better. It's basically made of beads and the time and effort that I imagine went into these is incredible. Can't get it out of the bag now. Because they are literally threaded together. You can see down the sides, threaded together is that going to focus? I think it has. Um, yeah, and made the cutest little progress keeper. And it's so light and cute. So I thought that would go really well on a Christmas project. So I got that and then I had to buy a skein of yarn. And all day I was drawn to this colour. There were quite a lot of variants of this colour. But this colour, I don't know why. I've never... I remember saying a few episodes ago that I'm not really a blue person, I much prefer pink colours, but this is stunning. It's mostly, that's probably really quite accurate here, it's mostly like a teal blue, but it also has some real lovely, lovely stripes of green in it, which I hadn't noticed in great detail before, but now I'm sitting here looking at it and showing it to you. It's really nice. It's got some darker teal. Yeah, anyway, this colour, totally, totally sold. And I knew, I'd seen some shawlography kits online and I knew that I wanted to have this colour in my shawlography. I think I was saying to my friends in, knit, in our little knit group that I wanted to make the shawlography in autumnal colours because it's autumn, why not? 
But when I'm finished, when I have finished the shawlography, it's probably going to be spring if last year's is anything to go by. So I'm not sure if that was the best choice, but I love this colour. So I'm going with it. And then I was in a predicament because for the shawlography, you need five colours. So I was on the hunt for four more and I did not get four more, but I did get one more. And I have seen some others that I think I'm going to purchase to go with it. I'm just still a little bit more undecided. And actually what I might do is I've mostly seen what I would like on Instagram. So what I might do here is insert a picture of the two colours I do have and then the three that I'm thinking to get your guys' opinion. That might be quite a nice idea. Anyway, the second scheme that I got was from Woolen Witch. Is that right? Woolen Witch. Yeah. Also a brand that I, sorry, a company that I had not purchased from before or heard of. I'm not even sure where they're based, but they had some stunning, and I mean stunning colours. Now, please excuse this hank or this skein or whatever you want to call it, because I undone it because I was trying to explain something to mum and then I couldn't really hank it back up very well. So it is a bit mumbly jumble at the front. So just look at the top. Um, this is Woolen Witch and it's a fingering weight yarn, 7525 um, superwash merino nylon, 100 grams is 425 meters and it's called Sunshine. So it's a really yellowy golden kind of mustardy colour. It's got some speckles through it but very subtle, not, not that many to be honest, which is kind of what I love about it. So these two are going to be my first two shawlography colours. Oh, I love them. And then like I say, I'll put a picture in, but I've seen a quite a dark, like musky pink, musky, dusty. I'm not sure, I call it musky, but I'm not sure that's right. Um, which actually, let me show you these because it's a similar-ish color to this. So anyway, I got those two. I then visited Ducky Darlings and I went to her stall and um, instantly said hi because um, she recognized me. I cannot remember the lady's name now. It's literally vanished. I had it on the tip of my tongue. I'm so sorry, I have forgotten. I'll put it here. I know the lady's husband's name was Nick. Why can't I remember her name? Was it Haley? Oh gosh, my memory, guys. I'm not sure. I'll put it here, like I say. Um, I went over to Ducky Darlings because I wanted to say hi and had spoken to her previously on Instagram and said that I would come over and say hi. And I did see online that she had some Christmas colourways. And I went for this. This is a sock set and it is on a 75 25 base. 100, this is 100 grams, this is 20 grams, so 120 grams. Um, yeah, four ply sock set. This is called Feeling Festive. Now I just love it and I know that these are gonna make stunning Christmas socks. I love the variegation in the yarn and the speckles and the golden color. Just, just beautiful. Whilst I was there looking at her yarn, I found this. Now, this is a mohair silk, and as you can see, it is super, super fluffy. And it's 50 grams, 420 meters, and it's in the colorway fuchsia. Now, I wanted to make, or I still do want to make, a Simple Pleasures hat. I saw it from Cherie on the Ollie and Bella podcast and I know she did a little knit along for it not that long ago. Um, and I think that will be an amazing hat for the winter. So this is what I bought this for. And then naturally I needed to find something for it to go with, which I'll show you in a minute. But this is, it's not quite the right colour. Now I'm holding it up, it looks a little bit different to what I'm after but if imagine I 
think it's a bit lighter than the fuchsia actually but these three colors together and then I'm thinking something creamy kind of off-white maybe and a gray I don't know I'm not sure I have got a couple of pictures like I say that um, have given me some inspiration but I think this will be really cute so that kind of color but this fuchsia I knew I had to have and I couldn't find anything on her stall that I wanted to put with it for the simple pleasures hat so I just bought it and I thought I said to mum let's be on the lookout for something that I can pair this with so we went round again to the stalls and I was taking this out of my bag and I was trying to I didn't really want to match it exactly because I didn't want to lose this colour in the hat with a fingering base but I wanted something that would showcase this colour but kind of had to go with it like I didn't want it to be a totally different colour so I was kind of a bit stuck so I headed over to Bird Street Yarn I'd already been there once eyed up their yarn had a little look around because mum my mum and I had a strategy we went there were two halls for the show there was a bigger one which was the grandstand and then there was a smaller one I have no idea what it was called um and they were distributing people into either in the beginning just so that you know it wasn't too busy and not everybody was in one place at one time so we ended up going in to the grandstand first and our strategy was to go round the outside of the hall of the stalls and then the inside um, so we did that and then we went over into the other one we looked in there and then we went back to the first one because we don't want to buy the first things that we saw in case we saw something else somewhere else um, and I already exceeded the budget that I had set myself so that was kind of our thought process amongst that so I was on the lookout for something to go with this that's where I was talking so I went back to Bird Street Yarn and found this well I didn't actually that's a fib <laughs> the lady at Bird Street Yarn was like are you okay how are you like we were chatting and I said I've got this mohair and I want to make a simple pleasures hat what shall I put with it and she said this instantly she walked straight over picked this one up off the shelf she said because you won't lose the color because it's not the same but it's got these stripes in it that are of the same variant of color so I really liked her suggestion and I really like that when you go to a yarn store or you know to a dyer and say right this is what I'm after this is what I need and they're the experts right they put the colors together they are they are the people that put these colors together to make these beautiful schemes so um she was so so helpful and it was really lovely and while I was there I'll tell you about this first sorry this is 75 to 25 superwash merino nylon 100 grams 425 meters and it's called golden hour while i was there and i was chatting to the lady um a couple of other people were sat right next to her stool and i started talking and they instantly turned around and they were like oh hi we watch your podcast and i was like oh no i was so embarrassed um, not embarrassed but it just really caught me off guard and I was talking to my knit group before I went and I said it suddenly occurred to me that that people might recognize me from the podcast whereas obviously people did recognize me and came up to me and started talking to me and they knew how, who I was because they were watching my podcast but I had no idea who they were and yeah I don't know it was just like a really surreal moment and it felt very very strange to me and it wasn't the first time that it happened um sorry I'm just rearranging my things so I can stretch my legs out um yeah it was a really really funny experience but they were lovely and I was like oh thanks so much for watching and we were chattering away and they were like oh so what are you gonna make with this um yeah so we were chatting I think they were friends with the lady from Bird Street Yarn um I think they were staying with her or something I can't remember what she said but that is going to make a beautiful beautiful hat so my list of uh, cast-ons is never ending now I've literally added to it quite a lot over the last week I imagine but um, what else did I get let me share with you guys because I am waffling on Belicia yarns at this point it was the end of the day well for us not for the um, the stall holders but 
it was nearing the end of the day and I wasn't really sorry a bit of rustling I wasn't really on the lookout for anything in particular but we were just kind of wandering to get back around to the beginning and I found this really cute pin really cute and I have been collecting pins for my Hohe hobo bag they've got it's got a perforated pocket at the front with holes in so you can put these pins on so I got a sock pin so now I can put that on now I have shown you and also went back round to Ducky Darlings at the end a bit more rustling sorry and realized that she had little oops that she had little duck ones that I didn't see the first time round so naturally I had to get a little duck one too so a couple of pins to add to my bag and I want to say Hayley I think the lady's name is Hayley at Ducky Darlings the lady um, also very kindly donated a sister set so she very kindly gave me this it's called the sunflower sister set don't need to explain why and it is beautiful and she said take one of these and use it for your podcast so that is also going into our prize bin and it was so generous of her and so kind and yeah I'm really thankful thank you somebody is going to love making a pair of socks out of that so I think guys that is everything that I bought um I also had a really funny surreal moment that I'll quickly share with you so mum and I when once we had done the grandstand and finished shopping there was carrying this massive cone of yarn around with me um we decided to go back to the car drop some stuff off at the car and work our way back inside sorry did I just knock the microphone I'm trying out a microphone today um there have been some sound issues and some people have been saying that the podcast has been really quiet so um I hope that this helps some people have said it's fine I think it just depends on the device that you're watching it on so fingers crossed this is recording sound <laughs> and I don't have to do that all over again anyway I got distracted mum and I dropped the things off at the car and we were walking back inside and I was just chattering away to mum about something and all of a sudden this this lady turned around and went this nanny knits <laughs> And that happened before um, the ladies at Bird Street Yarn recognised my voice and it really caught me off guard. I was like, oh, oh, hi. And my mum was like, oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. Like, how do they know you? And she was like, I just heard your voice and knew it was you. Um, which I thought was really sweet. But at the time I was like, I don't even know how to react to this. How do people know who I am? <laughs> that is something that you do not expect when you start a podcast you don't expect people to just recognize you by your voice um so that was really funny and yeah a, just a crazy moment and mum's like been telling everyone like oh my gosh these people actually knew who she was <laughs> my sister called me and was like mum tells me you were recognized you're like a celebrity and I was like well not quite but um yeah it was really funny and the lady did message me on Instagram after and was like, I'm really sorry if I embarrassed you, but I heard your voice and I had to say something. Um, so that was quite nice because then I was chatting to her and I was like, oh no, it's fine. It was just like, I, I didn't expect it. I didn't know that anybody would A, be there that watched my podcast or B, you know, just recognise little old me and my voice whilst I was walking along chatting to my mum. So it really caught me off guard. Um... But yeah, we had such a great day and definitely, definitely we'll be going back when it's on again. I think we just do it once yearly there. It's just an annual thing. Um, Mum had a great time. She did buy, what did she buy? She bought some yarn from Ducky Darlings um, for a litmus cowl. She didn't buy one of the kits, but she wanted something easy to knit on because she was having a little trouble with her anchor's tee or her anchor's summer shirt so I think she was getting a little frustrated so we decided to start her on something that might be a little more simple and she's doing really well on that we've also changed the needles that she was using because I got her wooden needles at first because I thought they'd be great as a beginner because they wouldn't be too slippy but actually I think 
just the combination of the splitty kobu yarn and the wooden needles and being quite distracted at home it didn't really work for her so we got her some i think they were knit pro zing circular needles and different yarn from ducky darlings and we came back here and i kicked it all up for her she went away last week this week she's been away um and she sent me a picture and she was like i've got it and she's actually knitting and it, it looks good so um i can't wait to see her progress on that so she bought that she bought needles she bought yarn from ducky darling she bought a couple of project actually about three project bags um she also bought a cow that was already knit up somebody was there selling them um that was really cool actually really nice and what else did she get I don't know I'm sure there were other things that she got um, and I'm sure I will share if I remember or her projects as she knits them so thank you so much for coming along and listening to me chat away about my haul um, let me know your thoughts on vlogging in more public places because that's something I need to work on. On this channel this year my hope is to do a bit of vlogmas so I need to sort that out, my recording and um, how I feel about doing that around other people. So thank you so much for watching. We will have a normal podcast episode next week um, because it will be the two weeks yeah next week for a podcast episode and then i think we are going to try weekly episodes um i'm gonna have a bit more knitting time as mentioned previously and in the comments i think a lot of people did suggest they would quite like a weekly podcast i think i'm also going to mix it up i'm going to maybe do a live youtube video here and there along with a normal episode maybe with a Q&A episode. So I just think trying to get a bit of variety um, into it will be a really good idea. But I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Have a lovely week and I will sit down and chat with you all next week. Take care, happy knitting or crafting and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.